Income tax, 2022-2023, rental property, personal use, dividing expenses. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from publication 527, residential rental property, including rental of vacation homes, tax year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one income. Remember on the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement. Although just an outline, other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. One of those, the schedule E and essence and income statement in and of itself with rental income minus rental expenses the net rental income flowing into line one income of our income tax formula remember that when we're thinking about rental property as when we're thinking about kind of business activities in general we would like to be parsing out separating the personal from the business because that helps us to better be able to do the bookkeeping as well as make decisions and budgets out into the future and of course do the tax preparation situation so we've taken a look at scenarios where we have rental property that's designated 100 percent as rental property then we want to consider those situations where we can't get around some of this commingling situation with the personal and uh, the rental where we often have to think about how we're going to be breaking out personal and rental so we can properly allocate mainly the expenses is what we're focused on here because obviously the income we wouldn't have any income if it was personal we need to properly be breaking out uh, the expenses between the rental and the personal Okay, personal use of dwelling unit, including the vacation home. When we think about personal use, there's a couple scenarios we can be thinking of. We might think of a situation where we have like a vacation home, another piece of property, not our primary residence that we rent for part of the year or po and possibly use personally for part of the year. Or we can think about a situation where we have a home or a place that we live in and we rent part of it out so now we have the fraction of the place that we rent out or a situation in which we have a conversion from personal property to the rental property so now we have a fraction of the year where it's personal versus business those are the general scenarios where we get this personal business scenario lined up here we're talking about the including of the vacation home situation so if you have any personal use of a dwelling unit including a vacation home that you rent you must divide your expenses between the rental use and personal use in general notice it says expenses here not the income obviously because the income is all from rental you wouldn't have any uh personal income so it's the expenses of the income statement we need to be breaking out in general your rental expenses will be no more than your total expenses multiplied by the fraction the denominator of which is the total number of days the dwelling unit is used and the number uh, of which is the total number of days actually rented at a fair rental price so we're gonna have to be coming up with a ratio kind of analysis in order to be breaking out these expenses now the, the, you can imagine different ways to calculate that ratio, which might be more or less uh, fair or or advantageous for the renter. So obviously we have to be in compliance with the tax code on how to calculate the ratio. Only your rental expenses may be deducted on Schedule E, Form 1040. Some of your personal expenses may de be de deductible on Schedule A, Form 1040, if you itemize your deductions. We have a similar situation we saw in prior presentations where when we're talking about income taxes, the natural thing that we would expect to be able to deduct are those expenses we need in order to, in, to generate the revenue. 
So we don't typically get to deduct personal expenses, uh, although there's exceptions, of course, the whole Schedule A has is full of exceptions to the general rule, such as if it was your personal residence, you might be able to deduct the mortgage interest, for example, and property taxes. So here we're breaking it out. We're going to be applying the portion that is appropriate to the Schedule E, being able to hopefully take the deduction on the Schedule E. And then the personal side, the question is, could you deduct it somewhere else like a Schedule A? You must also determine if the dwelling unit is considered a home. The amount of rental expenses that you can deduct may be limited if the dwelling unit is considered a home. Whether a dwelling unit is considered a home depends on how many days during the year are considered to be days of personal use. There is a special rule if you use the dwelling unit as a home and you rented it for less than 15 days during the year. So if you have a home, and you you rent it for less than 15 days well that's you might consider that to be basically immaterial from the irs's perspective so so in that case you might not have to uh, uh record the income or the expenses the idea from the irs perspective would probably be well if you only had 15 days of rental of the property it might be likely that you have a loss and the IRS doesn't want you to allow you to, to have a loss for this minimal amount of days because your expenses might be greater than the income that you got uh, for you know 15 days. So in any case, dwelling unit. A dwelling unit includes a house, apartment, condominium, mobile home, boat, vacation home, or similar property. It also includes all structures or other property belonging to the dwelling unit. A dwelling unit has basic living accommodations such as a sleeping space, a toilet, and a cooking facilities. So it's pretty broad in spectrum here. You got houses, you got boats, you got mobile homes, but you got to have the general living things you need. Uh, which is the toilet and the cooking facilities and the living accommodation. So a dwelling unit uh, doesn't include property or part of the property used solely as a hotel, motel, inn, or similar establishment. Property used solely as a hotel, motel, inn, or similar establishment uh, if it is regularly available for occupancy by paying customers and isn't used by uh, an owner as a home during the year. Example. You rent a room in your home that is always available for short-term occupancy by paying customers. You don't use the room yourself and you allow only paying customers to use the room. So now you've got your, your room that you're renting out. It's not for personal use. You're breaking that part out uh, from your personal usage. You didn't use it during the year for personal. The room is used solely as a, a hotel, motel, inn, or similar establishment and isn't a dwelling unit. So in that case, you're, you're using it more as a hotel kind of situation than a dwelling unit. And some of the, the distinctions you might have or think about in a hotel or motel type of situation is that you are, you're probably providing a substantial amount of services, you know, cleaning and, and, and uh, maintenance and that kind of stuff. Uh, in the hotel as opposed to a traditional kind of renting situation where your the primary activity might not be providing services cleaning and, and that kind of stuff but rather just the property itself being rented you know generating the money and more of a passive kind of situation so dividing expenses if you use a dwelling unit for both rental and personal purposes divide your expenses between the rental use and personal use based on the number of days used for each purpose so when dividing your expenses follow these rules here's where we get to the nitty and the gritty so the nitty gritty here so any day that the unit is rented at a fair rental price is a day of rental use even if you used the unit for personal purposes that day. This rule doesn't apply when determining whether uh, you use the unit as a home. So any day that the unit is available for rent but not actually rented isn't a day for rental use. So that's where it gets kind of messy because you're saying because what we would like to be able to say generally from our perspective would be I, I want to have the ratio that's going towards the rental property as high as possible. So if it if it wasn't being rented but was available to be rented, I would like to be able to count that as a day that is going towards rental use. 
and the IRS could be more stringent than that from the IRS's perspective. Obviously, you would think they would want to lean towards the personal side of the use because that will limit the amount of expenses. So again, any day that the unit is available for rent, but not actually rented, isn't a day of rental use. Fair rental price. A fair rental price for your property is generally the amount of rent that a person who isn't related to you would be willing to pay. Now, this is another area that's a huge pitfall with rental properties that causes all kinds of confusions and whatnot, which is that if you're renting to someone that that uh, is a relative or something like that, then you don't have a fair market transaction oftentimes and the prices get messed up. So, so then the, so then you have to be saying, well, I'm renting it uh, at a fair rental price, whatever that is based on the market. So you would think that you can do some kind of appraisal according to the market to see what that is, which is difficult because each piece of real estate is unique. Uh, so you have that situation. So the rent you charge isn't a fair rental price if it is substantially less than the rents charged for other properties that are similar to your property in your area. So ask yourself the following questions when comparing another property with yours. Is it used for the same purpose? Is it approximately the same size? Is it uh, in approximately the same condition? Does it have similar furnishings? Is it in a similar location? If any of the following answers are no, the properties probably aren't similar. Example, so your beach cottage, my good old beach cottage, I love that thing. Your beach cottage was available for rent from June 1st through August 31st on 92 days, except for the first week in August, seven days when you were unable to find a renter, you rented the, you rented the cottage at a fair rental price during that time. The person who rented the cottage for July allowed you to use it over the weekend two days without any reduction in or refund of rent. Your family also used the cottage during the last two weeks of May, 14 days. The cottage wasn't used at all before May 17 or after August 31st. All right, so let's figure the part of the cottage expenses to treat as rental expenses. All right, so the cottage was used for rental a total of uh, 85 days. So that's the 92 days that you, you had it for rent, but you couldn't get someone in it for the seven days. That's where we get to the 85 days. We, we on our end would like to use the 92 number, but no, they're saying the iris says no 85. Uh, so the days it was available for rent, but not rented seven days aren't days of rental use. So we had to take those out, bummer. So the July weekend, two days you used it is rental use because you received a fair rental price. So you're gonna say, well, what about those two days that I actually used it, but I still received the full rental price. So you would expect that that didn't, didn't hamper the personal use and the renting use. So we get those two days, so that's good. Uh, you used it rental because you received the fair price. So you use the cottage for personal purposes for 14 days, uh, the last two weeks. We had two weeks of personal use. The total use of the cottage was 99 days, 14 days personal use, 85 days rental use. So your rental expense are uh, 85 divided by 99 or 86%. Note that if you didn't have this guidance, you might make different kind of assumptions with regards to the percent allocation. And obviously on the taxpayer side of things, you would probably lean towards trying to maximize the percent that's for the rental side so that you can maximize your expenses. So just for comparison purposes, if you didn't have this guidance, you might assume something like this. You might say, hey, look, I had my, this, this cottage was out there for rent all a year and then I only used it for 14 days. So let's say you might say something like, well, it was out there for 365 days minus the 14 days that I used it. It was available, you know, 351 days rental. So 351 divided by 365 is like 96% rental, right? You could you could imagine coming up coming up with that kind of calculation comparing it to the total number of days. But notice it's the code the code is saying we want you to see the days that are in use. So you had it 85 days uh, of rental 
and then you used it for uh, two weeks. So that's going to be the 14 days. So so notice when we when we do our ratios, uh, your rental expenses are 85 days over the 99. The 99 being the 85 plus the uh, 14, which is far less than the number of days in the year, which uh, is 365. So again, you can kind of imagine if you made different assumptions, like very different type of ratios here that would be favoring either the taxpayer or the IRS in different situations. So the, the tax code, of course, is trying to nail down uh, what that ratio kind of assumption should be. All right, note, uh, when determining whether you use the cottage as a home, the July weekend to uh, two days you used it is considered personal use even though you received a fair rental price for the weekend. So when determining whether you use the cottage as a home, which is a, you know a different that was a a different thing that we we had to determine whether it's going to be used as a home versus our calculation here which is the figuring the part of the cottage expenses to treat as rental expenses okay and then therefore you had 16 days of personal use and 83 days of rental use for this purpose because you use the cottage for personal purposes more than 14 days and more than 10 percent of the days of rental use eight days you used it as a home so if you have uh, a net loss you may not be able to deduct all of the rental expenses so now we're running into that a net loss type of situation remembering that the IRS is going to be quite skeptical of the losses they want a piece of your income and that they're going to be skeptical of the losses so to see that we could see dwelling unit used as a home and we'll continue with that in a future presentation